So we were talking about isotopes before. You know, atoms in the same element can actually be a little bit different from one another. How? Well, they've got to have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons in the atom, but they can have different numbers of neutrons, which in the nucleus are particles that have mass but no charge. If they have different numbers of neutrons, they actually end up, each individual atom, with different masses. Okay, so like all the copper on the planet might be, we'll say, made up of two different isotopes of copper. Now, by the way, remember that this is a, 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 a type of abbreviation here for giving different isotopes. And where we put a number up here called the mass number, which is that, that mass of that isotope, and down here the atomic number, which is what copper is on the periodic table, element number 29, which tells us the number of protons in the nucleus, right? So that's the number of protons. It's also the number of electrons. And the mass of 63 is made up of the protons and the neutrons, not electrons. Electrons have one ten thousandth of the mass of those other two subatomic particles, so we don't even include it in the mass calculation. So now, here's the thing. The number of protons in copper is 29. In this isotope of copper, 63, what is the number of neutrons? It's the difference between the mass number and the atomic number. So the difference between those two numbers is going to be 34. That's the number of neutrons there are. Now, sometimes I do this to my students, and I say, hey, copper with a two positive charge, can you tell me right now everything I need to know here in terms of the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in that isotope of copper? So now look at it. You've got element 29. That's what that means right there. That's the number of protons. Stop. Got it. Protons. Do you always have the same number of electrons? Yes, unless it's an ion. That two positive charge says you've lost two electrons. Remember, we don't gain or lose protons. Proton stays the same. So the number of electrons in this isotope right here actually is two less electrons than protons. So there's 27 electrons. Then we look at the mass number, take the difference between that and this to find the number of neutrons, and that's 34. Okay, so a little bit of a review there. Well, maybe that's just something new there. Okay, I say to you this, this. Okay, no, I don't say that. I say, I've got copper in the following percentages in this world. Well, we all got it, okay? And it's this, 69.09% of all the copper that we know of is essentially copper 63, which is that isotope of it. But there's another isotope of copper, and there's 30.91% of copper 65 on this planet as well that constitutes the vast majority of copper here. Actually, there are a couple of other coppers, there, and, and, and uh, lots of elements on the periodic table have uh, multiple uh, isotopes, more than two, sometimes three or four. We'll just stick with these two for copper right now and say this. Here are the real masses of these expressed in atomic mass units. Two, two numbers after the decimal. And so, uh, before we get to the grams per mole stage, we'll just say that, that copper can have an atomic mass unit at copper 63 of 62.93 and copper 65 at 64.93. The question is, what is the average molar mass? Now, dumb kid alert, dumb kid alert, D don't do this. Don't say, well, you got your 62.93 here and your 64.93 here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to average those two together and I, I know what the average is. It's going to be 63. Point uh, 9, 3, which is kind of in the middle of those two, but remember the percentages are not 50-50. It's 69.09 and 30.91. Oh no! You see, we need a calculation to be able to determine this now. It just can't use common sense. Well, alright then. It's not that bad of a calculation, really. What you're going to do is you're going to take and say to yourself, alright, I've got an AMU here of copper 63 at 62.93 AMU. And what does this percent mean? Well, it means that if I actually had 60 point, well, let's say I have 100. <laughs> I have 100 grams, or AMUs, atomic mass units, of copper. 
How much of that is going to be copper 63? Well, 69.09 of them out of 100 is going to be that. Well, then here's 62.93 AMUs. And when we multiply by 69.09 AMUs of copper 63 over 100 AMUs, and we take this and we add it to 64.93 AMU of this copper 65 AMUs times, and now what's that percentage? 30.91 AMUs of copper 65, AMUs of copper 65 per 100 AMUs. What are we going to get? You do this math, and you're going to now get, when you multiply these two masses by their percents over 100, add them together. It's going to give you the average, and the average here is going to be 63.55 grams, or <laughs> I was going to say grams per mole, and that's fine because that's what it is, but it's AMUs for copper and the average AMU for uh, copper metal. Hey, how do I know that? I didn't even do a calculation. I didn't look anywhere for that result because that's the molar mass on the periodic table, and that's what you're hunting for. You're going to know that you got the question right because you got the molar mass that's given on the table.